for the latest NFL news and rumors. Big story that broke last night, ladies and gentlemen. The national anthem policy is now on hold. The NFL and NFLPA have released a joint statement. All right, reads in part, we have come to a standstill agreement on the NFL's PA's, NFLPA's grievance and on the NFL's anthem policy. So no new rules relating to the anthem will be issued or enforced for the next several weeks while these confidential discussions are ongoing. So basically, there is no anthem policy right now. That is, in essence, what is happening. For the next few weeks, there will be no sort of rules, regulations in terms of Kneeling, standing, staying in the locker room, whatever the case may be, this could leak into the preseason and on and on and on. So this is something that I just saw happening from the beginning. Why? Because the NFL imposed the national anthem policy without talking with or negotiating with the NFL Players Association. So the NFL PA was like, well, what the hell? And then filed a non-injury grievance on July 10th against the NFL, basically saying that the policy infringes upon player rights and that, hey, we were never consulted. We were never talked to. We were never aware of this policy. So the NFLPA's main issue was the fact that it just was not consulted on the matter. And so now we are at a total reset. We are at the point now, what basically should have been the beginning of all of this. Both sides talking it out. And both sides coming to an agreement in terms of how the NFL should go about the national anthem debate. Should the players be allowed to kneel? Should the players be required to stand? Should the players be allowed to remain in the locker room? So if you want to go by the current policy in terms of what the NFL etched out back in May, the players on the field are required to stand for the national anthem. They can also stay in the locker room. Or if they want to protest on the field, kneel, whatever the case may be, the team is subject to a fine, in which case the team can then trickle down that fine and bring it to the player himself and even suspend that player if the team sees fit. Now, the timing of this joint statement is interesting. Why? Because it became leaked last night, last afternoon, that the Miami Dolphins were planning on suspending players for four games if they knelt during the national anthem. So what is the main point to take away from this? This is going to get messier and messier, ladies and gentlemen. The Hall of Fame game between the Chicago Bears and the Baltimore Ravens is on August 2nd. And now we're all gonna be wondering, will players kneel? Will players stand? Will both teams just stay in the locker room? We are at a stalemate between the NFLPA and the NFL in terms of figuring out this whole national anthem debate. And a story came out yesterday, I'll get to that in a matter of seconds as well, about Jarrell Casey planning on protesting during the national anthem. So how should the NFL deal with this? And I want to hear from you guys. Pretend that you're an NFL owner. All right. What would your policy be in your eyes? in terms of the national anthem. Would you allow players to kneel? Would you require players to stand? Would you just say, the hell with it. Everybody has to stay in the locker room. No ifs, ands, or buts. Let me know in comments. I wanna hear from you guys about this because it's a very interesting debate here and something that's going to continue to drag on in the NFL. Talked about Jarrell Casey. He came out and said he is going to protest during the national anthem. Defensive tackle for the Tennessee Titans. He's a good player, too. And he's willing to accept any fine that comes his way. Saying, quote, I'm going to take my fine. It is what it is. 
I ain't going to let them stop me from doing what I want to do. If they want to have these battles between players and organizations, this is the way it's going to be. Now, Casey is the first player to come out and confirm that he will be protesting during the national anthem. However, according to the current policy, like I talked about, Casey would not be directly fined from the NFL. It would be the Tennessee Titans that would be fined from the league. But if the Titans see fit, they could trickle down that fine to Jarrell Casey. Now, many saw this decision from the NFL to implement this policy as a direct result from the pressure of the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. The New York Times reported in April that owners had met with players and league executives to figure out how to avoid President Trump's criticisms on social media while speaking at rallies, etc., etc. However, it appears that this current policy that is now on hold, by the way, doesn't satisfy President Trump, considering he told supporters back on July 5th that staying in the locker room is actually worse than the policy that the NFL had previously. So Casey is just the first domino to fall in all of this, folks. Now, the Titan CEO, Steve Underwood, said he, Mike Vrabel, the head coach, and John Robinson, the GM, will talk with Casey in terms of this national anthem debate. But make no mistake, this is just the beginning. Because we have the NFL coming out with this policy. We have the NFLPA filing this grievance. And now we have a standstill, a stalemate, a tug of war between these two parties in terms of what the heck is going to be the policy for 2018 because now it is on hold. And oh, by the way, we have two accusations of collusion from Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reed. So I'm seeing comments in here. I'm with Cap. You know, we're getting a lot of thoughts in terms of the comments here. I want to hear from you guys about this debate. And at the center of it all is President Trump and league executives, league owners, simply afraid of the president's real criticism on social media. And why are they afraid? Because owners can hear their pocketbooks getting lighter when President Trump criticizes them. Because it's a domino effect, right? So let's say the NFL comes out of this stalemate with the NFLPA and changes around the policy a little bit. It allows players to kneel during the national anthem. All right? So if that comes out, guess what happens next? President Trump goes to Twitter and calls out the NFL. What happens after that? Well, then the supporters of Trump, much of middle America, if you will, where a lot of big NFL franchises reside, the Cowboys, the list goes on, Chicago Bears, will try to boycott, boycott sponsors of the NFL, and then sponsors leave the NFL, and then owners get less money in their pocketbooks. So it's chain reaction after chain reaction after chain reaction, and you wonder why NFL owners are afraid of the 45th president of the United States. Solely because Trump sets the agenda in terms of this. All right, so it's a very interesting story to follow because I am really curious in terms of what the NFL and PA and NFL together etch out, work out together. Because if they don't get a policy that satisfies President Trump, look out because the NFL owners could be seeing less money in their pocketbooks. The NFL stadiums could be less filled. It's a trickle down effect. All right, so big time story across the NFL right now. I'm seeing one comment from Q Crew. Don't televise the anthem. That has been an argument by many people out there that why don't you just ignore the anthem? Just go right to the game, don't show it on TV, and let the players do it what they want in regards to that. So very interesting point there. Keep hitting me up in comments. I'll read your comments live on the broadcast. Of course, I'll have all the updates you need in terms of the ongoing national anthem debate.
All right, next story on the list. Roquan Smith to report to training camp soon. Well, that according to general manager Ryan Pace, he certainly sounds confident. Veterans reported for camp yesterday, rookies on Tuesday, but still no sign of the Chicago Bears first round selection. Pace said, quote, there's a process and meanwhile we're moving forward. Now, according to Pro Football Talk, the crux of the issue is the structure of Roquan's contract, including language that voids future guaranteed money and how roster bonuses are paid in future years. So Roquan obviously wants more guaranteed money in the coming years. The Chicago Bears apparently are not as adamant about that. So maybe eventually they get to this agreement here sooner rather than later, and Roquan will be on the practice football field for the Chicago Bears. I expect that to go down pretty darn soon. All right, next up on the list, Danny Amendola takes a shot at Bill Belichick. Amendola, of course, now a member of the Miami Dolphins, said on the Comeback Season podcast, SZN, that playing for Dolphins coach Adam Gaze is like playing for a friend while playing for Patriots coach Bill Belichick is like playing for the boss. Saying, quote, back in New England, it's almost like you've got a principal, the principal's office, and stuff like that. He used a different word, the SH word. Amendola is basically saying it's a breath of fresh air playing for the Miami Dolphins now and being away from the ultimate micromanager, Bill Belichick. You guys have heard my opinions on this show before about how Bill Belichick and his coaching style could soon be rubbing the players the wrong way. We saw it with Jim Harbaugh and the San Francisco 49ers. Yes, they had their run. Yes, they made it to that Super Bowl against the Baltimore Ravens. But what happened? Jim style, a college football style, to be honest with you, rubbed the NFL players the wrong way, and he was out. For Bill Belichick, obviously, he's a different caliber of a coach compared to Jim Harbaugh. Belichick has just unbelievable success in the NFL. But eventually, situations get stale. Unless you're Marvin Lewis and the Cincinnati Bengals, situations get stale in the National Football League, and coaches run their course, and we could be getting to that point with Bill Belichick. Now, let me just say that Bill Belichick is the greatest NFL coach of all time. But you know what they say, folks? All good things come to an end. And maybe the Belichick era in New England is ending sooner rather than later. All right, so Amendola is not the first person to come out and take a little stab, a little shot at Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. You may recall Cassius Marsh did that as well, a former Patriot. So it makes you wonder if Bill's style is even affecting Tom Brady as well. And that was the report out there from Seth Wickersham of ESPN. Now, in general, could we be facing friction for the Patriots and Belichick? According to Greg Bedard of the Boston Sports Journal, the bond between Brady and Kraft is at the heart of Belichick's issues with the group. So this is Bedard's quote. According to multiple sources, nothing has been hashed out between the three of them, at least at this time. That could certainly change as they come off vacation and ready for the season. But sources say the more likely scenario is that things are worked out slowly during camp or not at all. Now, Belichick is reportedly angry with Kraft for intervening in what was normally Belichick's domain within the Patriots organization. Hmm... Special bond between Brady and Kraft getting under the skin of Bill Belichick. Well, gee, Bill, if you weren't such a micromanager and you were more welcoming as a coach, maybe Brady would not have this special bond with Robert Kraft. And actually, you could be a part of a different bond between all three of you, Kraft, Brady, and yourself. So this is hardly surprising, ladies and gentlemen. The friction within the Patriots organization is still very real. There is evidence point after evidence point to point to. The Wickersham article from ESPN. The apparent retirement mulling from Rob Gronkowski. Tom Brady skipping OTAs. 
Cassius Marsh calling out the Patriots. Danny Amendola taking a stab at Bill Belichick. I've got the evidence, guys, to support my argument here. It's supporting detail after supporting detail. The Patriots friction is very real. And yes, winning can be a band-aid approach to all of this. But eventually, if your personalities do not match, you will have friction. And for Belichick, who is Mr. Dot Eyes, Cross T's, Micromanager, I'm going to be over your head and hovering, and Brady, Mr. Holistic and Calm and, you know, Kumbaya and Let's Take It Easy, California style, you know, it's just not going to work, especially coming off a season where Malcolm Butler got benched and that was a point of contention for many players out there. There's another supporting detail for you guys, that whole Malcolm Butler benching. So the friction within the Patriots, very real. I got to move on. My producer is saying, let's go, Cam. But I could talk about this all day long. You're watching the Cam Rogers Show presented by AutoList. Check them out, the largest source of inventory on the web for a new or used car out there. Or download their top-rated mobile app for iPhone or Android today. Get it done, ladies and gentlemen. We thank them for sponsoring the show here on the program. All right, let's go to the next news slash rumor. Jimmy Smith for the Baltimore Ravens is practicing, which is very good news. He had an Achilles injury back in December. Obviously, Smith is a very important part to that Baltimore Ravens secondary, headlined by Eric Weddle and Jefferson as well. I think the Ravens are in a really good spot heading into this season on the defensive side, although we have our questions about Joe Flacco, and I certainly do. Hopefully he performs better than last year. All right, how about the Aaron Donald deal? So the latest is that Donald expects a deal by training camp, but that appears unlikely. Donald wants market value, obviously, for his deal, while the Los Angeles Rams could actually go a cheaper route. The Rams can keep him off the market until 2021 at the earliest through the following pathway. A $6.9 million 2018 salary, which is what Donald is owed, so they can just ride that out. And then two years of the franchise tag. In 2019, approximately $15 million. And in 2020, approximately $18 million. So that's a three-year deal, guys of just under $40 million. Meanwhile, if Donald is looking for $20 million a year, which is the report, that's a $20 million gap between the two sides in the end because Donald wants $60 million by 2020. Well, in this case here, it'd be around $40 million by 2020 for the Rand side of things. So quite a gap in theory. So we'll see if that deal comes to fruition before training camp, but it doesn't seem likely and the Rams have some big-time financial decisions next year. Akib Tlaib, Andrew Whitworth is getting older as well. So things are starting to pile up. Oh, by the way, they just extended Brandon Cooks too. All right, so a lot of decisions to make there for Les Snead, the general manager. All right, next up on the list, Juju Smith-Schuster will pay to keep Le'Veon Bell in Pittsburgh. He told ESPN, quote, they should pay him up. They need to pay him. I'll give him a couple of mil just to keep him on our team. Well, I think this was kind of tongue-in-cheek and slightly kidding, but unfortunately for Juju, even if he was serious, it's probably a too, little too late for that because, well, Le'Veon Bell and the Pittsburgh Steelers could not agree to a long-term deal by that July 16th deadline. And so Le'Veon Bell is probably going to walk into free agency in 2019 and join the Raiders. So a video on YouTube here on Chat Sports will be released tomorrow. All right, it's me explaining why Le'Veon Bell will join the Oakland Raiders in 2019. So Raider Nation, get ready for that video. But as of now, it sure sounds like Le'Veon Bell is going to skip training camp, skip the preseason, and then play on the franchise tag for the regular season, make his $14 million, walk into free agency, and get paid big time by a team out there, all right? So Juju Smith-Schuster at least trying right now. Next up on the list, Allen Robinson. He's playing at full speed, according to Matt Nagy, the head coach there, after his ACL tear in week one of 2017. 
Allen Robinson seems ready to rock. He did sign a three-year, $42 million deal this offseason, so certainly good news there for Chicago, which has a wide receiver core, including Taylor Gabriel, Kevin White, if he shows up, Anthony Miller, their second-round pick. They got Jordan Howard, Tariq Cohen in the backfield as well. So good news there with the Chicago Bears. Allen Robinson well on his way to be a full go for week one of the regular season. Meanwhile, Joe Mixon, could he break out? Well, best shape of my life season is still going on, apparently, because Mixon shed some 12 pounds going from 230 to 218, and he needs to improve upon every ounce that he possibly can because the Bengals' offensive line stinks despite drafting Billy Price and despite getting Cordy Glenn. I still have my concerns about run blocking and pass protection for Cincinnati. The Bengals were 31st in rushing last season. They got to improve upon that big time. And then you guys probably saw this story yesterday. 49ers quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo reportedly dating a porn star. So he was spotted at the Avra restaurant in Beverly Hills where he was reportedly with a porn star, as you see, Kiara Mia in L.A. There's the picture that came through from TMZ. And it had a lot of the 49ers fans out there kind of wary about Jimmy Garoppolo's decision-making. I saw some comments on YouTube yesterday about this where 49ers fans were like, what is Jimmy Garoppolo doing? Like, you should be studying the playbook. You should be learning the Kyle Shanahan complicated offense. You should be, I don't know, doing something else, not dating a porn star right now. I am here to say I personally do not care what Jimmy Garoppolo does. Now, I am not a 49ers fan. I am a host of the 49ers Report, and I will be reporting upon this more on Sunday. But if Jimmy Garoppolo wants to date a porn star, let him date a porn star. You know what I mean? Like, does anybody actually have an issue with this at all? Anybody? You know he's going to be asked about this, too, when his next media availability comes up. Garoppolo is going to be asked, Jimmy, what do you make of people all up in arms about you dating a porn star? Whew. Yeah, big time stuff, ladies and gentlemen. The hard hitting questions there in the NFL. So it's porn star and national anthem, the two hot topics across the National Football League, ladies and gentlemen. So there you go. I guess uh, Pornhub is getting some activity right now, I'm sure.